Hi, this is Pim from Smart Diabetics Academy again. Today we are going to talk about how to get off of the blood sugar roller coaster. In this video, I will talk you through what types of foods are good for your blood sugar, which ones you need to look out for, and how to get off that blood sugar roller coaster. And I will also give you a way to cheat the system in case you are still struggling with your blood sugar despite doing everything right. So let's start with a few definitions. A normal fasting blood sugar level is less than 100 mg per deciliter or 5.6 millimoles per liter. Anything above that is considered pre-diabetic or diabetic levels. Two hours after eating, a blood sugar level of less than 140 mg per deciliter is considered to be normal. Anything above that is also either pre-diabetic or diabetic levels of blood sugar. So, now these are the official definitions and at large I'm fine with them but just know that despite having a normal response you can be insulin resistant you just won't know it because there are no easy tests to find out okay blood sugar mainly goes up when you eat and when you're stressed and I'm not going to stress the st a stress <laughs> address the stress part in this video but just know that if you are being stressed and your blood sugar isn't responding the way that you think it should that's most likely why and you need to find a way to de-stress okay so the main macronutrients in our foods are carbohydrates proteins and fats and they all affect blood sugar very differently carbohydrates are essentially sugars so table sugar consists of glucose and fructose for example and it quickly raises your blood sugar Starches consist of many, many glucose molecules on a long, long chain, which will be released pretty much one by one, sort of. So they will raise your blood sugar a lot slower and over a much longer period of time, which is why many, what they used to theorize that that was a good thing. I don't agree, okay? Anyhow, the spike is going to be less, so in terms of not being on the blood sugar roller coaster yeah they're going to be slightly better but it's still not good and then we have the proteins they do raise blood sugar to some extent but they also release glucagon which is the opposite of insulin basically they have opposite functions so it kind of counteracts itself but if you're insulin resistant things can start things can start happening here and kind of mess things up a little bit but generally it depends also on what type of proteins you're eating and whether you have enough insulin in your system or not and how insulin resistant you are. Fat barely affects your blood sugar at all and is therefore in terms of blood sugar the absolute safest food to eat if you want to stay away from that. Now when it comes to carbohydrates I am sure that you have many times heard that eating starchy whole grains is very important when you're diabetic but I'm here to tell you that it really isn't much different from eating the same equivalent of sugar it just goes out into your blood slower yes it does reduce the blood sugar swings slightly but when you downgrade from the monster roller coaster to the kids roller coaster why would you do that if you don't want to be on the roller coaster? Isn't it better to just get off the roller coaster? I'm hoping that that's why you're here anyway. But if you want to go on the kids roller coaster, then you can eat your healthy whole grains if you like. Now, the biggest offender when it comes to putting you onto the blood sugar ro roller coaster is carbohydrates, especially sugar. So what I need you to do is avoid all grains all starchy vegetables, or fruits, or tubers, or legumes, or other starch-filled foods like quinoa, amaranth, jams, whatever it is, all those fancy ones, stay away from them. They are not helping you, okay? And next, you want to assess what proteins you are eating. If you are eating any protein, or processed proteins, like 
protein shakes, protein bars, even if they are low carb, stop it. Just don't do it, okay? These are processed and will be metabolized in your body much quicker than any natural protein source would ever be. Which means that your blood sugar can rise quicker than it would to any natural protein source. So, whey protein for example is usually a really good example of this because it seems to be able to raise blood sugar quite a lot and insulin. So speaking of which, watch out for dairy. Many dairy products can raise your insulin and or blood sugar more than any other animal protein ever would. So whether this is enough to put you onto the roller coaster, I don't know, but it for sure isn't good and it isn't advisable. So always check your blood sugar so that you know how you react to different types of foods. So when it comes to fats, my recommendation remains the same. Keep eating a high fat diet if you can, if there is no massive stomach upset or whatever. It will help you to blunt the response you get to any carbs that you do have in your diet, which helps you kind of lower the, the blood sugar swings and to keep you off that roller coaster. And that goes for both proteins and carbohydrates. But even more so, it's barely affecting your blood sugar at all. So if you have a meal with a bit of protein, very little carbohydrate and a lot of fat, you're not going to get a lot of blood sugar being released into your bloodstream after eating. So that is really, really good news because that will help a lot. So what if you are doing all of this already and your blood sugar is still hopping all over the place? and you're not, you're not eating any carbs or very little carbs, you're not feeling stressed, 70% of your calories comes from fat and you're still seeing blood sugar swings. My quick and dirty tip to deal with this is to move more and eat less often. Not eat less, eat less often, okay? So if you're already practicing intermittent fasting, you might have to try a longer fast to get hold of your blood sugar. But I can promise you that this is the most efficient way of dealing with any blood sugar swings. Any moderate intensity exercise is by far the best tool to use when you want to get your blood sugar down fast. So if you use them together, you will see some pretty good results. Because if you're not eating all the time, you will still produce some sugar yourself. But if you are combining that with some exercise, you're burning that excess sugar off in your blood. It's going to be a lot of hard work for your body to keep up producing that much sugar and you're much more likely to get it down. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. And if you do, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Press the little bell icon so that you will not be notified the next time I release a new video. I will see you soon.